This week I wanted to work on collage paintings. I wanted to explore abstract landscapes, but only using paper and collage. And before starting to vlog the process the way I always do, I thought I would let you know what I use, like the very basic starter kit for paper collage, if ever you're interested in starting. And I'll also show you a few collages that I've done in the past to give you an, like a little bit of inspiration in what's possible. As far as materials, you don't need much. The first thing that I would recommend would be matte medium to glue the paper onto the surface. To me, it's a lot better than a glue stick or any other materials. I've tried them all. This, although it might seem like it would be messy because it's liquid, it ends up being like the cleanest and less obnoxious way to do it. So matte medium, a couple brushes. You can get really cheap brushes from the dollar store. If you get dollar store brushes, you'll probably have a pack of 20 brushes. Half of them might lose their bristles, like test it out. But usually the nylon synthetic uh, bristles are pretty good and very resistant for what you pay for. So those are the ones to keep within that pouch. One or two brushes. Matte medium is the bare essential. As far as the surface, you could always use a thick paper, but I don't like them because they end up warping. And sometimes I get a really nice collage that I would actually frame and keep as a final piece of artwork. And warping paper is not fun to frame or work with. So I always use canvas boards canvas boards they're very inexpensive they're about a dollar a piece they come in all types of sizes you can tint them they don't work they're long lasting you can frame them this is what i recommend and if ever your collage doesn't turn out you can gesso over i have tons that are already used some i have a lot of texture on them but I keep using them. It's not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna use the texture as a starting point for inspiration for another piece. So canvas board is really what I recommend. Aside from the matte medium, the brush and the canvas boards, you can use gloves if you don't want to dirty your fingers. You'll also need paper, which is gonna be your color palette and your paint because you're painting with paper. Over the years, I've collected a ton. I have all kinds of paper. Don't feel like you need that much though. You can just start with one magazine. You could have like a Vogue magazine and within that one magazine, you might have way enough to do multiple collages. Don't feel like you have to go out and shop for a really nice paper. Just use up one magazine or a really old book with pretty images that no one cares about. It might be damaged or whatever. In this collection, I have old magazines, Christmas wrapping paper, I have string, I have old paintings that I've done on paper that were either paint swatches or excess paint that I would smear and let dry or test for abstract texture. I've kept all of those like unsuccessful paintings on paper. I've kept them for paper collage because it gives nice texture and a color palette to start with. I have construction paper for big blocks of uniform colors. You'll need scissors, obviously. Uh, some kind of palette to put your matte medium in to work with and a jar of water so that your paintbrush full of matte medium doesn't dry up. You just rest it in it in between whatever you're working on. That's the minimum, a magazine, some glue, canvas board, and you're good. But you can add on a few nice things to your kit if you want a bit more variation. I'll go through those little bits now, and then I'll show you a few collages that I've done in the last few years. You can use old paint, like the remnants of paint that you've mixed on your palette that you haven't used, like paint mud, basically. Gesso is always nice to have because you can meld the background of the paper or canvas 
to the collage the pieces of paper that you put on and kind of like mash them together you can tint the gesso with ink or with any pigment and because gesso is matte it's good to use because you can go over it with colored mediums like a pencil or something like that a few pencils i have graphite the greasy uh, pencils i have a black and a red a sharpie pencils are fun for line work or to kind of like dig into the paper to create um, a texture oil pastels are great for paper collage they're full of pigments and they go on thick and luscious and nice you can get nice textures and nice line work with collage and the mix of them two together is pretty nice and the last tool that i might recommend would be tracing paper depending on the style of collage you want to go for tracing paper might be very useful if you have um, a sketch to start off with that has precise uh, shapes that you would like to cut out and like, plug in the way you would use paint to fill in let's say a circle you might want to use tracing paper to trace that let's say the outline of your boat and use that tracing paper as a template to cut out whatever paper you chose to go onto your final collage so tracing paper is a good tool let me show you some works that i've done i did florals a while ago I mainly used a book like a novel the book was really old and yellowed so it gave that vintage feel and i used the pages of the book as a backdrop for my collage and the rest of it was just painted over obviously it's a mixed media piece it's not just collage it's collage and paint and for the second collage i used the same book and i used the pages of the book as flowers combined with some paint i really like this one there's something very poetic about having flowers with pages from a book on a more abstract note i did a series a few years ago with like orbs and this is part of it so i started out by creating these textures on paper with paint I could have used a magazine to cut it out but i created my own textures myself and i played around with different compositions with all those different textures i did a little bit of line work oh i forgot to mention acrylic markers like posca pens it would be a great addition to collage uh, painting I quite like this one. I like the splash of this paint here on this egg. They feel very calming and gentle. I could see this as a giant painting. That's how I like to use collage. Sometimes you get really nice results like this could be framed and be a final work of art. And sometimes it feels more like a study it's a little bit more messy and it needs tidying up but it's a great starting point as an inspiration for a large canvas i've done that in the past where i did a small six by six and i translated it into a large 36 by 36. i've said this before but collage to me is a great way to infuse a lot of inspiration and creativity in your painting practice because textures that already exist in the world might not have seeped in out of your own hand but when you play around with it on a canvas board like this and you use collage it really sparks your imagination and you can bring that forward into your own painting practice for different painting series i did these little guitars as you can see i'm very inspired by music I'm learning to play the guitar I'm not very good at the moment but slowly but surely you know and these last two collages i'm going to show you are also inspired by music here you go there's a guitar in a hand and this is where you might have 
wanted to use tracing paper you can have a reference photo of something like this if you're not like super confident in your drawing skills and trace that bit of the photo and use that tracing as a template to go and get a texture that you like and cut out around that that's how it could be useful to have tracing paper and here's a little hand playing the piano and this is a great example of a collage study that turned into a large painting. Let me show you. It looks different when it comes to the color palette, but I still used my study, especially for the black notes and having the colors peek through as a point of inspiration for this large painting. As I was mentioning this week, I think I want to work on abstract landscapes, like horizons and things that are more abstract and working more with composition, placing shapes and interesting textures and color palettes together, as opposed to having something more figurative. But who knows, I might end up with collaging a cat or something. Who knows?
I ended up doing seven collages, which is pretty good. Most of them are landscapes. I'll show you each of them with close-ups, but before we get into it, I wanted to show you what I bought. I got influenced. I was watching Sandy Hester's last video. She was doing her favorite art supplies of 2022. There's a few things in there that seemed interesting. I went to the art supply store and I got a few things. I'm gonna swatch them and then we'll look at the collage. She was talking about this ivory black by Derwent and I must admit that I tried it and it's very velvety. I think the most velvety black I've ever tried it feels very good to play with so loving this one i got a few prisma colors none of which are directly recommended by sandy i just like the colors so look, let's look at them there's this icy blue loving this one bleu ciel pâle sky blue light and then we have a few neutrals here let's do this dark purple It's a very nice plum color. This one is magenta. Lovely, very smooth. And, um, and the neutral color. So this one is more like a brick color. It's pumpkin orange. It's terracotta. It's very nice, a very nice neutral. It's halfway between brown and orange, I would say. It looks a lot more orange on camera, but in real life, it's more muted than that. This is really nice as well. The color is henna. Super nice neutral. It's like a very dark, dusty rose. Beautiful. And this pale color is called peach beige. I love this one. I don't know why they call it peach beige because it, it leans very much green but it's really nice and there's a lot of pigment for such a pale color it's very pigmented and this blue is super nice as well love these colors for the very first time in my life i'm trying water soluble wax pastel never tried this before I only got this one color because I don't know if I'm going to like it. I got natural sienna, raw sienna. Let me get a watercolor brush, see how it works with water. Oh my God, it, oh my God, it dilutes really well. Why haven't I tried this before, like before now? Wow. I thought I loved uh, watercolor pencils. This seems to be way better. It doesn't leave a residue. It melts away. Oh my God. This is a new discovery. This is genius to go like paint on location or bring as a small travel kit. This is an amazing discovery. If you want to paint in watercolor, but you don't want the mess, new color to water soluble wax pastel. This is amazing. Amazing. There was a big promotion on my local art supplies. These were like $2 instead of maybe $5. I got two greens. It, they're Prismacolor Premier markers. They're double ended. So there's a point in larger this is a nice sage green i would say with the point very nice on camera it comes up more saturated in real life it's a lot more neutralized which is beautiful oh i like this point it's like a paintbrush this is another green oh my god this is super pale did I get a dud, like a used up marker, or is it supposed to be like this? I don't know. It's very pale. I like it. Hopefully it's not like an old marker that doesn't, that won't last more than a minute, but it's a, it's a nice pale green. The last thing that I was super excited to try 
for these watercolor brush pen never tried watercolor brush pens before got completely influenced by sandy so i'm gonna try these two i got pastel blue and i got beige 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 here's the beige one. Oh, the tip feels really good oh my god i love the tip of this really nice Oh, it's so delicate and nice. Love it. I wonder if you can activate it by with water, if it's supposed to be watercolor brushes. Is it really watercolor brushes? I might just be inventing this in my mind, you know? It might not be watercolor brushes. <laughs> Is it? Or is it just like a marker? Oh no, it seems to be reactivating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So it is watercolor brushes as opposed to a marker, which is, it's there and it doesn't move. So these move, okay. I also got a cat free deep yellow. I love this color. My very favorite is really that wax watercolor soluble pastel. Amazing. Love the black. It's Ivory Black by Derwent. Love those watercolor markers. If I really use them, I think I'm going to get more colors and I think they might be refillable. I think that's what she said. And my favorite uh, colored pencil colors that I got was the peach beige and henna. I was also very inspired to pick up a nice sketchbook and try to draw slash paint in a very free way, the way Sandy does it. Her paintings are beautiful. I don't know if you ever seen her channel if you haven't go check it out if you like pristine realistic type of classical art you probably won't like it but if you like very expressive free type of work you will fall in love so i tried my hand at that type of style which i'm not in love with it doesn't really work out for me but it's a first attempt you know there's something so poetically beautiful about her paintings in the sense that you see that is someone that went with pure inspiration, spontaneously, expressively, honestly, without holding back. And it feels so like freeing and liberating. And I wish I could do more of it. So this was my first attempt. It's not great, but I think I'm gonna try to work in a more of a mixed media fast furious non-judgmental way i think it's difficult it's a lot harder than one might think it's that cliche thing where people say oh a kid could have done that mm, try it go try it and then come back to me now let's look at the collage for some of them, I used my imagination and kind of went only in color study and composition study instinctively in a more spontaneous way. Like this one, for example, I just created a lake with a few trees and a skyline and mountains. I kind of like the result of it. It's very minimalist. We all know I like a good minimalist painting. I like it. I like the little dot of red on it. It's a sweet, calm collage. But I also try to render something from a reference photo. I use this as a reference and I collage this. This was really interesting because I had some nice paper that felt kind of like fabric. It was see-through, kind of like tissue paper, but 
more uh, of a fabric tissue paper and I really liked working with it. And for this collage, I only tore paper. I didn't use scissors at all. So there's all these jagged edges and I used a bit of marker because in ripping the paper, it would create these white edges. I could have left it white, it was nice, but I decided to put a bit of dark blue in some of the edges, even some dark green to have a tree line. There's quite a few things that I like about it. I like a good ripped edge. I think it's interesting. I'm pretty happy with this one. I think it really renders the reference photo's essence in a nice way. I wouldn't call it a minimal collage because there's a lot going on at the bottom. But if I were to use this as um, a reference for a painting, I would pretty much reproduce this entire section as is, but clean this a little bit, have this a bit more minimal, less, um, less trees or less movement at the bottom and keep a focal point here. I quite like, like the sky and the mountain and the tree line. All this to me is really nice. Like, you know, this one was done from imagination and I put a lot of layers of collage on this. I used a mixture of ripping paper and then cutting out some paper. It's not one of my favorites, but I have to say that I really like the sky here. But I think that the sky mixed with the, the bottom part, they kind of fight each other. It's a little too busy. If I had done something very like streamlined here, it might have been nicer or vice versa, like a non-busy sky. But I think the most interesting part about this is the top two thirds, in my opinion. I like this little lake, but you know, yeah. I'm gonna save the two best for last. The two best of my eye. Here's another study of shapes and composition and colors. I really quite like the color combination here. Minimalist, love it. Love the blue and orange with the black and white. Is this a landscape? There's a sun, there's some clouds or a sky. David says, this looks like a waterfall. I'm going to call it an abstract landscape at sunset. What do you think? <laughs> the last two are here and I don't know which one is my favorite. Oh, I'm going to say this one is my favorite. David's favorite is this one. So you might recognize it because I used one of my latest landscape paintings as a reference to reimagine this collage. Usually I use collage as inspiration for paintings. I just decided to go the other way, just out of curiosity, you know, try things, see what works, discover new things. I have to say that it's very successful in the sense that I was able to render a very convincing landscape based on my painting. So I'm really happy with that. And this is the one that I showed you with the technique of using tracing paper to trace the shapes I wanted, then stacking a bunch of paper. That's what I filmed and I showed you because it was the most intricate kind of technique that I use today. The other ones were more like playing around with bits of paper that I had, but this was a lot more intentional. So that's what I captured. I wanted to show you the process and it was very successful. Love it. Love the poetry book that I incorporated here. Love the gold foil. Love my leaf paper texture bit here. I put a little bit of paint in the sky, the tiniest bit. It's David's favorite. My favorite, however, which is probably not gonna be your favorite, is this one. It's very quiet and beautiful and calm. I love this one. I wouldn't mind having that in a humongous painting somewhere in my house. I also did a little guitar guy 
it's not my favorite, but I like the shape of the guitar and the gold little bits of paper that I used. Let me know what your favorite is. I hope that you're inspired by collage. It's a great, great medium to not think so much. It reminds me of like working on a puzzle. A lot of people work on puzzles during the holidays. This is my kind of puzzle. If you want more inspiration, watch this one next and I will see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.